Greetings and welcome back to Doctor Who Reviewed, where I review Shooty God was first season, and now we are on to Dot and Bubble is the name of the episode we are now reviewing. And let me just tell you, this is my favorite episode of this season so far. I never would have expected it to be to be you know that like a mid season you know kind of one off but this episode just works for me i love it and it really just touches on so many of the things that i want to see in doctor who and so many so many other things that make up doctor who i i said this um about the the first episode the space babies episode that as ridiculous as it was it is inherently doctor who this episode takes that and elevates that above uh, everything that I, I just said. This this is a Doctor Who episode through and through. And more to the point, this is a Russell T. Davis episode through and through. It just has all the cliches I want to see in my Doctor Who episodes. And I mean, this episode just... It, it's just... It's the perfect taking up a mirror and holding it up to the audience, showing them how society looks like these days. And I just love it. I ate this episode up, minus the ending. We'll get to that. But, I mean, from the start, from when this episode just opens, I mean, the episode opens with uh, the main character for, for the episode. Uh, she wakes up, She and then the first thing she immediately does, what, what does she do? She's connected. She's uh, she's got the dot and bubble. I mean, Russell just went so literal with this. It was it, I just had a, a smug grin on my face for pretty much the entire episode. She's connect. She's always you know with the screen in her in her hand in her face, and she's always you know checking uh, uh, updates. She's talking to her friends. She, she doesn't. I mean. This is just taking the concept from Wally, -E, the the movie Wally, -E, and just exploding it. It's it, it, it's Wally -E on steroids. She she's even got these arrows telling her where to go, when to take a turn, making sure she doesn't see all the other bad stuff that's happening around her around her society. And when she takes it off, she when she turns the the bubble off, she just forgets how to walk. It's a, I mean. It, you cannot seriously like you cannot be you there's no way you're watching this and miss the message there's no way that you don't immediately get what russell t was going for i mean like i said it's wally with, with the uh, in, and of course in wally they were sitting on these couches with all, the, all the food and stuff and they were just constantly talking communicating with people without even having to Look left or right. And then this episode takes it to a whole other level. It's not just a screen in front of them. It's literally a whole bubble covering up their their faces to emphasize the point that, oh yeah, these people literally live in their own bubble. They don't look outside the bubble. They don't know what's happening in the rest of the world. I don't even think these people know what the rest of the world looks like outside the bubble. It's crazy, and all they're watching is just friends, not even landscapes, not learning history clearly, not doing anything productive or useful. They're just watching other people that they've never met on a, on screen. It's that social media gone wrong, and they're worshipping uh, and idolizing influencers. I mean, how perfect is this? How perfect of a mirror to how society has devolved into what it is today. Uh, I mean, this 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 is one of the episodes that truly make Doctor Who great and, and just shows you why Doctor Who is the great uh, show that it is. It's because it's literally taking the modern society and showing it up to us. I mean, it's it basically, this is the perfect natural evolution of the Eccleston era from, you know, the era of we control the news, we control the media, evolving into reality shows, basically control people, curiously, you know, happening in the same location, uh, if you didn't catch the message. 
and this this now just evolves into just social media dominates people's lives and telling people where to go, what to do, what to do, what to think, and what to feel, and just how to exist. And it's it's amazing that uh, Russell T was able to bring that out into this just one episode. And oh yeah, pe- people are so distracted by social media and just talking to their friends and their influencers that they follow they don't notice they're being devoured by giant slug monsters i mean it's just the perfect example of how society is falling and people are just not aware of it i love it i i just love the way how, how the episode uh puts it puts it up in your face now of course a uh, serious note uh coming up it's so fun in games when you see it in a Doctor Who episode. You got you got to really take control of your life and uh, make sure that society doesn't fall into the hands of uh, giant man-eating slugs. Uh, just a point of order. But uh, yeah, so for the majority of the episode, about actually almost the entire episode, Ruby and the Doctor were kind of a no-show. They were just sitting in the same room talking to uh, I can't remember the the, the name of the, the Pepper Bean. A character I, for, I already forgot her name but that's how much i enjoyed this character uh in in this episode but uh so the the doctor and ruby were just sitting there on, on these individual screens just communicating with her uh, so yeah that must have been very easy to shoot for uh the uh shooting god by Millie gibson must have really freed up their uh schedule uh, but uh yeah so i've got a couple nitpicks before we get into the big problem i have with the episode uh, first of all, I mean, she turns off her bubble and looks at the slug devouring some dude. And then turns the bubble off, has some more conversation with the Doctor and Ruby, and then she starts walking out. And the slug hasn't even finished. So, I'm, um, I'm sorry for the morbid question, but how long does it take to swallow a person whole if you're a giant slug? Like, really kind of felt like uh, the slug really took its time. So, really kind of uh, took away from the horror of the scene. We're supposed to be f- really feeling for this girl who is now trying to get out of uh, out of that room. And there's a hungry slug after her. But, you know, the hungry slug really took his time devouring that one person. So, how much in danger she, was she really? And the, the, this episode has had a lot of um, uh, predict- predictable moments. Like, you know... Uh, she opens the elevator, and of course, there's another slug coming at her. But then it goes back into the traditional Doctor Who style that we know and love. It's like, okay, so the slug doesn't eat her, and the Doctor is wondering why. And just like the Doctor, you, along with the Doctor, are trying to figure out uh, the mystery, trying to figure out why the slug didn't uh, eat her. Uh, th- that that one girl, and I just love in, in that in that scene that that, that the Doctor and Ruby are trying to warn her not to go into the slug, not to not to step into the slug, and you see the people on uh, on the smaller screens on her bubble also panicking, uh, thinking that it's that it's going to get her. So yeah, I love that bit of attention to detail. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, then of course the, uh, the the big influencer guy shows up, and. It's very unusual. Like, he turns off his bubble. He doesn't, you know, live in the bubble like the rest of the people. Uh, He actually reads. He learns history. He knows about stuff. That right there is a little bit suspicious. So I I kind of... uh, I I was a little bit uh, suspicious of him at first. But then it turns out, no, he's actually genuinely a really great guy. And he really wanted to help uh, save everyone. And then she kills him. Like, okay, the guy saved her, uh, she hugged him, uh, he held her hand, uh, he saved her from the from the slugs, they ran away. I think he really was the calming voice, and try, trying to calm her down when she realized she was next because of the alphabetical thing. He was really pushing the buttons, he was fighting the dot that was trying to kill her. He did everything to protect her and help her, and first opportunity she had, she killed him. Well, not directly. I mean, she let the dot know what her his real name is, and she just let the dot slice his head open, and he falls to the ground. And then she gets away. 
okay, if, if I was at one point rooting for this girl to survive and make it out of there alive, that was gone after that moment. I mean, like, now, of course, I probably shouldn't be too judgmental uh, because, you know, this is the society she was bor uh, born into, she was brought up into it. Uh, so, I think it's natural for her to sacrifice the first person she sees to save her own skin. Um, I still didn't like it, though. I still didn't like uh, what she did. At that po point, I was so shocked. I was almost rooting for the slugs to take her. Uh, and uh, before we get into my big problem with the episode, it's... Um, okay, so finally we know what those giant slugs were, f were for. For those of you who remember, we, we saw the leaked footage uh, the people uh, released online of just the, the slugs devouring people. I think I have a video of it somewhere that someone someone uh, took. But like, uh, so now if we finally know what, it, what what that was all about. And the slugs look amazing. I lo love the effect. But what are they? Where do they came from? What is this planet? Um, I think the problem here is the episode was a little too short. And the little screen time that this episode had kind of focused more on the girl trying to get away. Didn't really focus too much on world building and setting things up. And this is kind of, you know, not really what Doctor Who does. And a special emphasis on Russell T. Davies. I mean, Russell T. Davies, I think, can be counted among... Uh, Terry Nation, Stephen Moffat, uh, Robert Holmes, and as far as world building, universe building in Doctor Who, this is kind of a weekday at the office for him, where he didn't really set up the the world too much. I mean, I, I kind of got most of uh, what he was going for. Like, uh, there's the home world that sends young people at the ages of 17 to 27, or something, I think, uh, to work, and then, you know... They work two hours a day and then play the rest of the uh, of the day. Really reminds this episode really reminds me of a lot of big finish storylines that I loved. So we really just cherry pick the best bits from some of them and uh, put them in this, into this one uh, needle package. But yeah, I wanted to know more about the home world. Well, what's gonna happen to it now? Now that it's been taken over by all the slugs and the population is you know gone. So yeah, that it's a bit of a problem that. Kind of left all these questions unanswered. Unlike uh, uh, 73 Yards, these are some questions I think we kind of need the answers to. Uh, but then we get into the real downfall of the episode. Uh, for me, personally, is how the people just turn on the doctor. The doctor kind of helps save all these people, especially that, that one girl. And then they all just give him the cold shoulder and walk away. He offers to save them. And they all just walk away uh, because of some weird class thing um, because you know it's stated in the episode it's mentioned in the episode that they're basically the rich kids only the really rich kids get to go to that uh, that one planet to the one dome bubble thing and live their lives there and so that's why they, they turned on him and they, they didn't want his help uh, and uh, yeah but I think the biggest problem I have with this episode is the Doctor kind of just gives up on them. Like, he knows they're going to die. He even says it as much. And they still, you know, turn away and walk away. And the, the Doctor just leaves them to their fates. That is kind of not what the Doctor does. I'm a little disappointed that the Doctor did it. I mean, it as much as I loved this episode for being a Doctor Who episode, in that way, it kind of turns into a Star Trek episode where... Uh, after you learn all the problems with the, a certain society and how they live, the people of the Enterprise or Voyager or whichever uh, the Defiant, whichever uh, starship happens to be the main focus of whichever season, uh, whichever series, they offer to uh, they offer to help these people learn and grow above their societal norms. You know, evolve, and then just no, oh, no, thanks. We're fine. We're, we're we're good the way we are. We're fine living in this backwards middle uh, medieval like society. 
we like our lives there, don't try to change us. So yeah, that kind of felt a little bit like that. And uh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed that the doctor just broke away from his usual norm of helping people no matter what. And that, that kind of uh, bothers me. But I think I, something else that also bothered me, not so much for the plot, but maybe um, bad look uh, for this show. Uh, so the excuse that they gave for why they uh, wanted to, uh, why they didn't trust the doctor to help them and save them is like they said something, uh, you're not one of us, we don't want to go with you, we'll get contaminated, something or rather. Uh, now, this could be because he's old. I mean, for the record, Trudy Guy was in like 30 or 31, he's like my age, uh, and all the other, these other people are like uh, between 17 and 27. So, yeah, could be construed as him being too old or, you know, being from a completely different society, a different planet. But am I the only one who noticed that Shuri Gatwa was the only black person in this episode? Really? Like, that that's what we're going with? Like, all these... White kids don't want to go with the black guy because they're afraid of being contaminated because he's not one of them. Am I the only one who sees the problem with this? And it's kind of disappointing that it's coming from uh, Russell T. Davies. This is uh, Russell, Russell T. Davies not just approved that line, he wrote it. So, yeah, that's a bit of bad luck. But that being said, the rest of the episode, because of everything that it represents... And all the issues that it brings forward, uh, I still like it. I still like it a lot. It's my favorite of, of the season so far. Just, you know, the ending kind of really throws it off. And uh, another thing that I really like is and at the beginning, uh, the, the doctor tries to convince that, uh, tries to get that girl's trust, and she immediately blocks him. And then uh, after the intro, which, by the way, hey, the intro's back. I'm so glad that, that we got the intro again. But... Uh, then Ruby tries uh, to connect with the girl. You know, she's younger. She's more of uh, the age range that these people are going for. And, she, you know, she really tries to connect with her. And she really tries to uh, befriend her. And, uh, you know, and of course, she would have an easier time connecting with this girl, getting her to listen to her than the doctor because she's much more in tune with uh, the slangs and the lingo and the way people think uh, in this generation. Uh, but yeah, so I think, uh, I think I said enough. Uh, the young generation is rotten. Uh, the screen generation always keeping their eyes on the screen. Not even bothering to look for forward or, uh, left or right. I mean, true to form, uh, full disclosure, I'm no better than this, okay? I mean, clearly you know from my background that I'm a bit of a Pokemon fan. I play Pokemon Go regularly. And I always keep my head in my phone on my phone. However, I have the decency to look both ways before I cross the street, or at least be slightly aware of my surrounding. People in this episode don't even do that, and, and that is the real commentary here. The social commentary of this episode is that people do not even bother to do that. Uh, that being said, uh, that is all I have to say for now. I'm really excited for next week's episode this is the what, what we already what some people originally thought was a was going to be a victorian era uh episode now from the next time trailer it kind of looks like they're just going for a uh victorian style uh ballroom gown where people that can, that can literally sh shape shift into uh masquerade uh party goers i'm excited for that i can't wait to see what they got off their sleeves for that one, but that is, of course, a story for another time. So, thank you for watching. If you have, let me know if you have any social commentaries, uh, any comments or, or comments you want to leave on, on this uh, video, and uh, what let me, let me know what you think about it. So, uh, till then, everybody, don't get eaten by giant slugs. Bye, ya! Hi there! Thank you for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like,
comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.